Good morning all. In the previous video, we started our discussion on consolidation of soils. We briefly discussed how the one-dimensional consolidation is executed in the laboratory using the odometer. And we briefly discussed the height of solids method and change in void ratio method. Here, we'll have a brief discussion again on Tasaki's theory of one-dimensional consolidation. You can see four figures here. One, two, three, and four. Now this set of figures corresponds to what we call as a spring analogy in which Tasagi assumed the soil to be the spring and the water in the voids as the water in this container. So the analogy is like this. You have soil analogous to the spring, the water inside the container analogous to the water inside the soil particles or the matrix and the valve that you see here above the spring on the cap is the drainage or the permeability of soil. So the assumptions of Tasagi's theory is that the soil is isotropic and homogeneous, the soil is fully saturated the coefficient of permeability does not vary with time and space and Darcy's law is applicable and soil and water particles are incompressible. Now the analogy is quite simple. In figure number one, when you apply a load over the cap, the load is taken entirely by water and so the spring doesn't deform but when the valve is opened the figure now changes to figure number two so when the valve is opened and application of the load under the application of the load water starts to squeeze out so when water starts to expel out or squeezed out the spring deforms which means earlier the entire load was taken by water and now as water starts escaping out, the spring starts to take the load and it deforms. So in figure 3, this process continues where the spring takes the load further and the water expels out further. So in figure number 4, almost every load that you apply on the cap is taken by the spring as water tries to escape out completely because the valve is open. Quite similar to this, when you apply stress on soil particles under consolidation, initially the water is taking the load. But when permeability is allowed, soil starts to take the load and it gets compressed like the spring and water starts to escape out. This is the analogy proposed by Tasagi. It's called the spring analogy where the soil is the spring, the water in the container is analogous to the water within the soil, the saturated soil, and the valve over the cap is the permeability. And these are the assumptions listed by Tassay. For formulating the equation, the derivation of the relation by Tassay, he assumed a sample of initial volume of delta x, delta y, and delta z dimension, whose initial volume v0 or v0 is delta x multiplied by delta y multiplied by delta z, the volume. Now he considered the pore water pressure, the rate of change of velocity, the discharge of water through the soil volume and the stresses existing. And the solution of a partial differential equation he developed gave the dimensionless factor called as the time factor. Now the derivation of this time factor and the solution to this partial differential equation that you get from the analysis of this volume of soil is quite, is, is quite interesting but it's not included in your syllabus. So I chose not to include it this in this PowerPoint as well but nonetheless the time factor which is a solution for the partial differential equation TV the time factor is equal to CVT by D square where CV 
is a coefficient of consolidation. K by mv gamma w is an expression for CV, where K is the coefficient of permeability, mv is a coefficient of volume change, T is a time corresponding to each stage of consolidation. So in short, time factor TV equal to CVT by d square, where CV is a coefficient of consolidation, which in turn equal to K by mv gamma w, where K is a coefficient of permeability, mv is a coefficient of volume change, and T that you see here is a time corresponding to each stage of consolidation. Of course, gamma w is a unit weight of water, and D is the drainage path. The degree of consolidation U is a ratio of dissipated excess pore pressure to the initial excess pore pressure. U, the degree of consolidation, equal to Ui minus U by Ui, the ratio of dissipated excess pore pressure to the initial excess pore pressure Ui. Now, the coefficient of consolidation CV can be determined from the readings that you have taken from the laboratory, for which you have two different methods. Number one is the square root of time method, which is a graphical fitting method proposed by Taylor. And at 90 degrees of consolidation, it is established that the value of root of time factor TV is 1.15 times the value obtained by extension of the initial straight line portion of the graph. Now this factor is considered for the graphical method, square root of time method. The second method is a logarithm of time method, which was proposed by Casagrande Grande and is another graphical fitting method. And the key idea of log of time method is that the plot is assumed to have an initial parabolic portion followed by a linear portion and then an asymptote. We'll take up the square root of time method first to determine what we call as the coefficient of consolidation. So for a given load increment, the dial gauge reading, DGR, is plot against square root of time as shown in this figure. So just recalling what we discussed in the laboratory test, the data that we have in the laboratory is time and dial gaze reading. So from the dial gaze reading, we measure the settlement. So in this particular graph, we take the dial gaze reading and the root of time. Instead of time, we take the square root of time. The square root of time is marked in the x-axis and the dial gaze reading that you get from the uh, laboratory is marked in the y-axis. And you produce back the linear portion of the graph that you get while plotting DGR versus root T to meet the y-axis at a corrected 0, R0, like this. So this was the original graph. And you extend the initial linear portion to meet the y-axis at the corrected zero. Now produce a straight line portion again onto the x-axis like this to meet at point B. Find OB which is origin to B and mark a point B dash somewhere here such that OB dash equal to 1.15 OB. So I have a point B dash here such that OB dash, the length, is equal to 1.15 times OB. Now what you should do is you connect RC to B dash and this line RC to B dash will cross your graph at let's say point C, C and point C where RC B dash line meets the curve corresponds to R90 and root of T90. 
which means from point C when you extend or drop a perpendicular to the x-axis you'll get T90 and when you draw a line parallel to the x-axis it meets the y-axis at R90. So R90 and T90 will give you C. So knowing RC and R90 you'll get R100 using this particular equation. So fundamentally from the graph you have RC which was the one that you obtained from producing back the linear portion to the y-axis and you have R90 and from RC and R90 you can get R100. Now knowing the value of T90 in the x-axis, CV coefficient of consolidation can be found out using this equation. CV equal to TV d squared by T90 where time factor for 90% consolidation capital TV equal to 0.848. In short, from the graph you will get the denominator T90, D is the length of the drainage path and capital TV the time factor will have a value of 0.848 for 90% degree of consolidation or U equal to 90% which corresponds of course to T90. And D that you see in the numerator the length of the drainage path is given by HI plus HF by 2 or the average height or the drainage path for a single drainage condition. Single drainage means that the water is allowed to move only through one phase of the clay layer through the top side. When the water is allowed to pass through both the top and the bottom side you have the double drainage in which D equal to half of this value half of HI plus HF by 2 for double drainage. So depending on whether the soil in the laboratory is under single drainage or double drainage you should choose the value of D the drainage path length and if you take a look at this particular graph the portion R0 to RC this portion represents the initial consolidation whereas RC to R100 represents primary consolidation and after R100 you will have secondary consolidation. The second method to determine the coefficient of consolidation CV is a log of time method. In the log of time method for a given load increment the dial gauge reading DGR is plot against the logarithm of time like this. You have dial gauge reading in the y-axis and logarithm of time in the x-axis and when you plot you'll get a curve like this. Next you'll have to select any two points B and C let's say corresponding to a time T and 4T which means at time T let's say the point on the curve is B and C corresponds to a time 4 times T. So this is T and this is 4T. And this falls in the parabolic portion. Now you'll have to plot a vertical intercept marked as A in this figure between B and C and offset it upwards like this to meet the y-axis at the corrected 0 RC. So basically you take this vertical distance from B to C, keep that to get RC in the y-axis. Then draw a tangent, a couple of tangents at the curve below or extend the linear portion to meet each other at a point like this. You have a linear portion here, you extend that you have another linear portion here, you extend that, let's say it meets at this point. That particular point corresponds to R100 on the y-axis and T90 
t100 on the x-axis so like this r100 is here and t100 is here from which you can find out r50 once you know r100 you can find r50 using this equation by knowing R50, you can find T50, like this. You know R50 here. Draw a line parallel to the x-axis. Let it meet at a point here. Drop a perpendicular, which should meet the x-axis at a point corresponding to T50. So knowing R50, you'll get T50. And knowing T50, you can arrive at the coefficient of consolidation. Cv equal to Tv d squared by T50 here. Where Tv for 50 percentage consolidation is 0.196. So this is 0.196 d squared by T50. T50 is a value that you obtain from the graph. And d is a path, the drainage path. Now the second method is a log of time method and the first method was the square root of time method in the first method you had 0.848 and here you have 